Welcome back everybody. It is November of 2020 and this is going to be episode 23 of what is on my desk. So this is going to be a bit of a shorter video than usual. Um, I have not had a lot done at the desk. Um, I've been spending the last two and a bit months focused very intently on getting that Twin Otter project done. I, I mentioned it in the last uh, monthly update. Uh, so that's been my main focus because I have been working to a timeline on that. Um, and it was a very different model from what I'm used to working with being a large scale foam with a lot of customization. Uh, so I was, I was focused very intently on getting that done. And as I said, it is done. I handed it off to the client uh, a couple of days ago. So it is, um, out of the house, it's gone. I can focus back on, on my project. So I, I have had a little bit of work done on those kits over there. Uh, the four kits, the, um, <clears throat> the Zero, the P39, the F15, and the C45. I have got a little bit done, not quite as much as uh, you would have expected in previous months because of that, that focus on the Twin Otter. And I also have uh, basically nothing new. No, I've got no new... Um, no new models, no new material, no new nothing. Nothing's new. I have not spent really any money recently uh, due to um, everything with COVID. So <clears throat> nothing really new to talk about, but um, we'll, uh, we'll go over that Twin Otter. I did get some uh, some video and pictures of it and whatnot before I handed it off. So we'll get a, a, a final update on that Twin Otter. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll swing over to the desk and we'll take a look at those four kits. And as always, my name is Sean and this, Sean's Aviation. And just before we get into the video, um, something I should have been doing a lot more up till now, and that is just asking you guys out there, if you enjoy what you're looking at, if you are if you like what I'm doing, go down below, uh, click on the, the like page, subscribe to my, my channel, and uh, by all means, please click on that little notification bell. If uh, that way you guys get, uh, uh, get alerted when I do get more new content up. I usually try to do the what's on my desk uh, monthly update beginning of the month. And I usually try to get a video or a series of videos released um, by the 15th, the middle of the month. So whether that's going to be a uh, tips and tricks video or an aviation history video or my time lapse videos of the previous model builds that I've got done or uh, an air show video or, you know, um, some of my new product review videos I'll be doing. So I'm going to try to get something posted uh, by the middle of the month. So uh, please, if you're enjoying this, subscribe, like and click that notification bell. Let's move on to the video. So here is the Twin Otter model as it sits completely finished. As you can see, it does take up a large amount of space um, on the floor. So I have, um, it's kind of a mess down here right now. I gotta do some cleanup still after and finish this, but I can't really clean everything up until I get this out of the way. And I'm actually supposed to be handing this over to the client uh, in a couple of days. So I wanna get this uh, filmed and out of the way before um, I do that. So this began life as an E-Flight um, Twin Otter RC model. So I'll actually, I got the box still sitting over here. So you can take a look at the box. It's Horizon Models. It's upside down, but that is it there. Horizon Models, um, E-Flight Twin Otter, 1.2 meter wingspan. And you can see it does include the floats uh, to use on the kit if you so choose. Now, because the, the request was to build this as a uh, static model, I went ahead, if you haven't seen the earlier videos, I'll do a quick uh, rundown. So underneath the wing, I'll show you in a second, on the bottom of the wing, there's a channel that basically runs the whole length of the wing from tip to tip. And inside that channel are the wires. So there is a receiver that lives down inside of here. I pulled that out. And then from the receiver, the battery pack is up here and I pulled out all the wires. And those wires would normally run up uh, through a connector and then down the wing and there was one that ran out to the motor in the wing which I pulled out there was another wire that would run to a landing light which I pulled out and there was another wire that ran out to the wingtip lights which I pulled out and then there's the control lines which would run from the um, receiver which would run out to the servos and there's two servos in each wing one about here that ran the flaps and one out about here that ran the ailerons 
So I pulled all of those wires out, I pulled out all of the servos, I pulled out all the control rods that run from the servos out to the end of the uh, control surfaces, I pulled off the horns, the plastic uh, horns that sit on the control surfaces, I also pulled out all of the cable, or the wires that ran out to run the control surfaces out on the tail, including the elevator and the rudder, I pulled all of that stuff out. I filled in that, tra uh, that, that trench on the bottom with styrofoam actually from um, the box that it came in, I cut pieces of the foam out of that and used it to fill in the spaces on here. And then I went ahead, uh, I sanded that down, I used railroad, um, model railroad uh, styrofoam putty, super light but nice and chunky and it fills in all those gaps. I filled in all of the, the gaps around there, including the areas back here where I had to carve off of the holes uh, where the control rods came out. Um, up in the uh, compartment in the nose where there would normally have been the battery, I glued in a small Tupperware container full with uh, BB shot um, used to hold that nose down to weight the nose. That cockpit section, which is normally removable to access batteries, I glued that in place and I puttied in and all of the seams all around everything. Um, the windows, which were stickers on the uh, original flight, uh, the original E-Flight, the, the RC version of it with our stickers, I pulled all of those off. Um, a lot of, if you look on the box, for example, you can see all of these windows are stickers. And then this swoop, the bottom is blue, the white is uh, top is white, but that gray and blue swoop and the registration, that was a sticker. So I pulled all of that off of the plane, uh, filed it in G for garbage. And then I went ahead and cleaned up the fuselage with that styrofoam putty, any of the weird dimples and seams. Uh, the styrofoam did have all these little dimples over it everywhere. Uh, I guess it's an artifact from the injection process uh, where the nozzle would actually inject the foam. Um, it left a little sort of dimple. So I went ahead and um, cleaned all those off, filled in any. Sorry about that guys, the uh, battery uh, went ahead and died on me. So as I said, I went along the fuselage with that styrofoam putty, I filled in any of the holes where I, I cut out some of the uh, control rods, I sanded off all the dimples. Uh, there was a bit of a seam down the middle as this was sort of two halves of styrofoam that were glued together. So I cleaned up that seam that went around um, everywhere and then when I pulled the stickers off, it kind of left a rough surface. So I sanded all of those down, cleaned everything up, uh, same with the wings, uh, the gaps around the wing fences I cleaned up. Uh, there's a little spit, uh, uh, the black leading edges were actually tape, which I pulled off. And there's a big, huge plastic square piece, clear plastic where the landing lights were. I glued that into place, cleaned up all the seams around that. Um, did as much cleaning up as I could on everything. The tail um, that has, if you look on the box, you can see right there, it has the little sort of auxiliary vertical st uh, stabilizing pieces um, where for floats, for example, the uh, caravans, have, uh, the twin otters have that as well as caravans. Um, you can also see there some of the control rod pieces where I, I pulled those off the model. Um, so I had to fill in um, the holes that existed on the horizontal stabs for that as well in the center here there's sort of a plastic reinforcing plate that exists inside on the horizontal stab so I cleaned up all those seams as much as I could everywhere where I pulled off those little control uh, horns to hold the control rods I had to clean up those little bits so once I had all of that all completed I then used a styrofoam primer um, it's from um, Krylon uh, spray paint. It's a styrofoam primer specifically designed to work on styrofoam. So I primed the entire airframe and wings. Everything got a coat of styrofoam primer just to seal it. And from there I went ahead and I actually used Krylon spray paint. Now be very careful using Krylon spray paint because it will melt foam. So you need to go ahead and prime it first and then do the foam, uh, the, the paint on top of it and that protects the foam. I also used an acrylic um, clear coat um, which allows me to seal everything and give it a nice sort of neutral surface. So where example, where the paint would melt through the acrylic clear, uh, so the styrofoam, I could apply the clear coat, paint on top of the clear coat, and I won't do anything funky to the styrofoam. So after primer, sanding primer sanding got as much of the little sort of dimples and everything down as good as I could get it I then went ahead and painted it all white took a couple of coats of white to get it done and then from there was the fun part uh, so I then had to match the colors so there's a, a blue um, and then the red here on the tail and then this lighter blue so there's a dark blue stripe a red stripe with the red tail you can see this back here is actually the dark blue and then this lighter color blue I had to match all of those colors as closely closely as I could to the colors on the actual airframe and then I had to start uh, placing things out so for example all the windows I printed out 
as decals. Um, so I was able to get those uh, between using the stickers and the decals and everything else. I could place the windows where they belonged and then from there I was able to measure down to the red stripe, paint the red stripe. From there I was able to measure down to the blue stripe, paint the blue stripe. Uh, I was able to do the black anti-glare panel. Uh, that gave me spacing back here for the tail, which then gave me the spacing for this uh, blue leading edge. Uh, the horizontal stabs I was able to figure out, get those blues painted. This blue as well I was able to paint. Uh, the cowlings, uh, normally they get the cowlings are actually screwed. The motors are mounted to the wing. The cowlings get mounted to the motor because the motors aren't installed anymore. I had to uh, jerry-rig everything to have the cowlings mount to the wings. I also had to uh, jerry-rig a connection for the props because they normally mount to the engines, which don't exist. I actually used some washers and screws and nuts and I built a little plate inside and the screws mount to the cowlings, the cowlings mount to the wings. Get all that installed. I uh, painted the leading edges black. Uh, the flags here are decals, the survey, all the windows, um, the registrations, the logos, all of that are all uh, custom made decals. Um, and then uh, so the stripes are painted, uh, the uh, lines around the doors, I painted all those by hand, the red cut lines that you can see here, I painted those by hand, the props, um, I painted, uh, the tips are painted white, um, everything else is done. There's also, uh, I'll zoom in a little bit here so you guys can see on the front of the props, there's the Hartzell logo on the front of the blades as well as the Pratt & Whitney logos on the side of the engines. Those were provided by um, uh, basically a family friend, they have a Cricut. One of those uh, sticker print uh, cutting pieces. So yeah, they have one of the, the Cricut, that uh, sort of uh, printer that does printing as well as vinyl cutting. So they're able to print all that stuff out and cut it out on the vinyl stickers. And then I did the survey pods. So the wingtip pods, uh, this is a, um, I got some pictures I'll kind of throw up here as I go showing some of the progress of this. Uh, but this I basically was able to get the drawings for the shape of the real one, scale it to the right scale. I then pr uh, cut out um, a template and then I cut out uh, wood. So there's sort of two places, a vertical, um, plate and then a horizontal plate creating a cruciform shape that matched the outlines and then from there I created um, a couple of ribs in here that matched the diameter of the circle um, so I was able to do all of that up and then that gave me sort of the the shape of it all and then the diameter of everything and then from there I just put styrofoam blocks um, you can kind of see the remnants of, of some of the styrofoam sitting over there. I put the styrofoam blocks into the area and then sanded it down to shape using those wooden um, formers, sort of like a template to sand the foam down to. Finished it off, uh, built the, uh, the braces here. So there's wire that goes into the wing and then is bent and then goes down into the pods and then these braces are glued onto those wires. Everything is cleaned up, puttied, sanded, blended, and painted white. Tail boom. You can see the tail stinger boom back here. That's just a piece of a half inch wooden dowel uh, cut, mounted, cleaned up, painted, and then mounted to the fuselage. So overall, it turned out really good. The landing gear I had to modify as well. Um, the wheels on this, it, the aircraft itself sat way too high off the ground for an actual twin otter. It didn't look realistic at all. Um, so I modified the main gear. Um, it's a wire, obviously, that runs from one wheel through the fuselage and back to the other wheel. So I actually used the mounting for the floats because they were a little shorter than the wheeled landing gear. And then I just modified the bottom piece uh, where it normally would drop down into the float. I cut it off and I mounted the wheels directly to that. And that got the stance a little closer. It still sits a little high, but it's the best I could do with what I had. The nose wheel, I just chopped it as short as I could put it, made it fit. So everything in there uh, balanced out. Now the wings struts themselves. Um, it's a very heavy model, unfortunately, and it's very difficult to pick up. I'll have to pick it up from the nose. Um, the wings struts themselves. I have them kind of temporarily in place. Um, I don't want to pop them into the wing here right now as I'm not sure how easy they come out. And I'm afraid if I put them in, then uh, they'll never get them back out again. And this model will need to be shipped to its final kind of destination. So it is uh, just temporarily put in there for now. Um, I left the wing, I mean, in a perfect world, I would have cleaned up. Um, let me get the focus here. Uh, I would have cleaned up these seams, uh, but the wing has to be removable for it to be shipped. So I left kind of the RC mentality where you just turn this little screw here and then the wing pops out and that would normally allow you to access all of the internals when it's an RC plane. But in this sense, it's just allow this massive plane to be shipped to its final destination 
a little bit easier. Um, so overall, I'm I'm very happy with how it turned out. I went ahead and did a lot of little things. Uh, for example, across the top of the fuselage here, I added some of the antennas that exist on the real planes. There's a lot of wires. Um, that would normally run between these and, this, and then stuff from here to the tail. I couldn't add those because if I added the wires, the wing wouldn't be able to be removable. So it's not 100% accurate, but it's close enough uh, for the look. And then I added things like the little steps on the side and the scoop and the steps down here. Um, I added as much of those little details as I could to um, make the plane look as close to the real one as possible. So that has been my main focus for roughly the past two and a half months. Uh, was to get this completed uh, so I can get it back to the uh, client and have it uh, shipped off to its final destination. So very happy with how that turned out. It was my first attempt at large-scale foam airplanes. I've done balsa in the past um, and I would have preferred to do it in balsa just because I know balsa well and it's a much more forgiving material to work with. Uh, styrofoam is not easy to work with. It is very difficult to get a, a, a nice finish and it doesn't like to be painted very well. It's very, you know, paint will eat styrofoam. Most, you know, model glues will eat styrofoam. Most of the putty I used will eat styrofoam. So I've had to kind of change the way I do things in order to get this completed. But again, I'm very happy with the final product. So that's going to be getting out soon. Uh, so it is, I guess, today's what, the 20, 22nd or 23rd of October. Um, so I still have a few more days left in the month. So as I'm filming this right now, let me get you uh, swung back around here for a second. Just hold on. So yeah, as I was saying, it's the 22nd or 23rd of the month. I still have some time left in this month. There's a few little things I need to do down here now that I'm finished this Twin Otter. I need to clean up some of this uh, material, the box, the instructions, some of the leftover parts. I need to clean up the model desk a little bit. Um, I got a few outstanding projects, stuff that I, I should have been getting to. Like a, I, I want to call, I shouldn't call it a honeydew list, but things that I need to get done around the house that have been pushed because I've been focusing with so much of my free time on this Twin Otter. So I'm gonna take a couple of, maybe a day or two, get caught up on that kind of stuff. I might still get some things done on those four kits because as at the point I'm filming this right now, I have not touched those four kits since the last um, monthly what's on my desk update video. So pretty slow on that front, but hopefully I'll get a, a couple of hours on that before November 1st rolls around. And I get this video finished and, and finalized and uploaded for everybody. So um, on that note, if I did work on the models, Let's move over to the desk and you guys can take a look at uh, what I got done at the desk. So here we are back at the desk guys and uh, as I commented, uh, I did not get quite as much done as uh, I would have hoped. I mean, I've been so focused on that Twin Auto, which as you just saw, it looks amazing and I'm very glad it's done and I'm very happy that uh, they were happy with it and then it's off of my hands and it is no longer my concern. Um, but because I was focused on that, what got done here was a lot less than one would have hoped uh, and that I kind of planned on. So basically all of these models have been on a more or less a two month hiatus. I have had a little bit of work done uh, in the past week or so since I got back down to the desk and working on my stuff. Uh, so I'll quickly go over the progress I have. Uh, so first and foremost, I was working on the Zero. I kind of decided because normally I work on four kits and I'm constantly going and whatnot, but I've, I've kind of been on a bit of a, a work desk burnout with that with that Twin Otter. So I've been kind of coming down for only little spurts at a time, five, 10 minutes at a time, just to kind of get my mojo back and get into things. Um, so I've been focused, I focused almost completely on the zero at first, uh, just poking away at little things and doing some, some, uh, some detail work. So uh, the fuselage sides, um, I have, uh, I'll zoom in here a bit so you guys can get a good look. So I have done all of the detail painting in here, the black, uh, the silver, anything. I, I picked out a few details, gave everything a black wash, and I have done a dry brushing on all of that to pick out some of the highlights. So the fuselage sides are done. The cockpit itself has also had the same treatment done. So I've picked out a lot of the details, gave it a black wash, and then a quick dry brush. Uh, the dry brush doesn't show up very well on this uh, metallic green color, um, but uh, the black wash definitely made it stand out. And then in here, there's a decal for the instrument panel on this side. And then the seat, nothing crazy, just a little bit of black wash. I mean, it is what it is. I'm probably not going to do seat belts or anything. If I do, it'll just be Tamiya tape. I'll see what it looks like when I get it all together. Um, the, uh, the instrument panel is also done. So again, it's a decal and then uh, the machine gun on the top. And then everything got a black wash and a 
uh, dry brush. So it does look really good. Like when you start putting everything together, you know, you can kind of start to see um, a finished product, and you can see it is going to look really, really nice when it's all done. Being with, I'm going to probably leave with the cockpit open. And you'll be able to see and, and, and see off a lot of that detail. So I'm very happy with how that turned out. Uh, so I focused on that for the first couple of days. And then, you know, as I started seeing progress happening on this again, like I said, my, you know, my mojo kind of got back. And then I decided to swing over and start working on the P39. Uh, so the uh, P39, I've given everything a black wash. I've been using that Tamiya um, panel line accenter. So I've been using that, which it does leave a bit of a gloss look, but I will give this a, a flat coat before it's done. The Zero, I'm going to leave the way it is, but this P39, I'm going to give the, uh, the plan a uh, gloss coat. So I've got the, uh, picked out some detail in black, and then I did the panel wash accent on it. I haven't done anything else yet. Uh, I'm working on the rest of the cockpit, which you'll see here in a second. I'm going to dry brush everything at once, and then there's some details i got to put on on the side of the fuselage here, the throttle quadrant and some little photo etch and, and whatnot, and a couple of decals, and then uh, everything will kind of be blended together and flat coated, and it will look, uh, it'll look amazing when it's done. So that is that. Here is the main cockpit. Um, again, um, it's a little shiny because of the panel accenter, but you can start to see uh, some of the detail. There's two parts here um, that still need, I need something to point with. I'll pick out my handy um, model pointer 4000 here. Um, the, uh, there's a, a control stick here that needs to be painted silver, and there's a little control stick here that needs to be painted silver. And then there is a little tiny, I don't know if you can even make that out, there's a little tiny photo etch handle right there, that's going to be painted black. And then after that, everything in here has already been painted, and as I said, the black wash is done. Uh, there's even a decal that sits down in here in this corner uh, that's in place already. So once I get that aluminum painted, um, everything will be getting a dry brush and then a flat coat, and then this will basically be done. Um, there's a few little things I need to do back here. There's a photo etch piece that fits onto this radio. I've already painted it on the fret. I'm probably gonna glue it in here once I get the dry brushing done. Um, because it is a cable, so it wouldn't really see any paint chipping. So I'll add it after I dry brush, but before I flat coat. And that way that any super glue residue, which is a little shiny, will be flatted and you won't even notice it. And then I just have to pull the masking out of that. I also put a bit of black wash down inside here, so it'll get a dry brush as well when I do everything. So it is coming along. Very happy with how that turned out. Uh, it's going to look really good. When you put it in the fuselage, it really kind of pops and stands out with the car door style. When it's open, it is going to look amazing. So the other thing I have done is the instrument panel. Again, I'll zoom in a little bit more. Let's see if this will focus. There we go. So that is the instrument panel. Let's turn it around this way so you guys can see it. Actually, uh, no. Yeah, I want to flip the video. Um, yeah, this is right. So um, it's a photo etch instrument panel with the film backing so you can see the instruments um, in the background. Um, the uh, rudder pedals were plastic that got glued on the back and then there are machine gun kind of uh, bodies that stick out. They're not perfect, they're a little bit actually, it's just photo which so I should be able to bend them back straight. Um, as the model has been, oh, I just broke it. That was what I was afraid of. Um, as the model has been sitting, it's been bending the photo etch. But anyways, I'll glue that back on. But the bodies are the back here for the, uh, for the machine guns. Uh, this piece right here, I actually lost the photo etch piece. I was being really careful and it still managed to just, like, I heard a ting and it fell and I have absolutely no idea where it landed. I scoured the floor. I completely cleaned up down here. Uh, trying to find it. I have no idea where it went. So, yeah, a bit of a write-off on that one. But um, you can't win them all. So I'm just going to have to live with um, not having that. But a little disappointed with myself, but it is what it is. Um, so I made a, a sheet out of plyos, of, of, of uh, styrene, the thinnest styrene I had. And then I just used my punch, and I punched out the holes, and then I kind of cut up the film and, and made sure the instruments all lined up. So it still looks good, so I got to do some dry brushing still on this piece. Uh, this part right here needs to be painted black, and then this, this, this needs to be dry brushed. And then there's a few little handles and stuff that gets put on here in some random places. I'll deal with all of that afterwards and, uh, and whatnot. And then I'm probably not going to... I gotta be very careful when I flat coat this because I'm not sure if the instruments will fog or not. But uh, I might just kind of leave it the way it is. Um, I might do some like mask the upper half and flat coat the bottom part. But I'll see how things go together before I make that call. So that's the P39. Um, I haven't done much else on it. And then other than the P39, the only other thing I've done some work on is the F15 
and literally all I did was paint the side panels um, black. Um, when I had the black paint out for the P39, I just went, I had I'd put more paint out in the little uh, cup than I had planned. So I had more black paint left over, which I didn't want to waste. So I just went ahead and painted all of the side consoles in this. And then while I was dry brushing the Zero, I went ahead and gave it a, a hit with uh, the dry brush as well, just to make the details pop. So that's, other than that, I haven't done a whole lot. Um, but I mean, again, you can really start to see how, you know, that's going to come together and look really cool when it's all all done. So I still have to do a lot of detail painting on the sides. These have to be all picked out and the seats have to be put together and the instrument panels. And so I haven't, it was just, uh, I didn't want to waste the paint. So I went ahead and did it. So that's basically it. The C45, um, there's been nothing done on the C45. I haven't even touched it uh, since the uh, beginning of all of this. So it's just been sitting here waiting. I mean, I shouldn't say that. I glued I glued the rudder pedals in place and I gave the instrument panel a quick dry brushing again because I had the dry brushing uh, ready so I just did this and then I had planned to paint these silver while I was doing some other work but I've been kind of focusing on that and I got away from working on every kit at once and I'm just focusing on that P39 because I don't want to miss anything. When you're working with that photo etch it's very easy to, to jump ahead or miss a step or um, lose a piece which I have done but anyways um, so I've been focusing on that just to make sure I get it all together and then I can put it aside and I don't have any chance of breaking anything or knocking it or losing a piece of photo etch so I'm just going step by step by step and uh, I like using this water-based paint because it's really easy to clean up um, I'm able to do just little tiny things at once I'm not so worried it dries easily and quickly so I'm not so worried about mixing colors and whatnot and, and whatnot when you paint an oil paint over an oil paint you start to get bleed through and it it does some wonky stuff the this this oil water-based paint is, is beautiful the Vallejo water-based paint is beautiful going on um, it doesn't like bleed through the other color it doesn't soften the other color so I don't care about you know I can paint a bunch of colors all at the same instead of doing all the aluminum and then I can pick and choose and I can paint and mix and match. Anyways, it makes it a lot easier. So I'm focusing on just the one. So that is that is basically it. That is the update at my desk. As I said, I have not done much. I have no new products to show you. Um, I mean, I shouldn't say I have no new products to show you. I have a product to show you, but it is absolutely nothing special. Um, and I might do a bit of an update on this in the future when I uh, try it out. But I have uh, seen... Um, working on that Twin Otter model, I had lots of issues with overspray in some places. And uh, I was a little disappointed with the outcome in some cases. So I uh, just happened to be looking at, at another guy's painting techniques. And he uses press and seal. I don't know if this comes in a different name elsewhere in the world or whatnot. But it's simply that it's a cling wrap, but it's got little adhesive bubbles. So if you push, it sticks to whatever you're pushing it on. And uh, he uses this as a masking material. So you can just rip off a sheet. So you use your masking tape, and then you just stick this to the tape. And it's a nice big sheet that helps you protect it. You can take it off and move it from side to side and reuse it a few times. And that allows you to mask massive amounts of, of the model without using very expensive Tamiya tape. Which is why I don't do a lot of masking because I don't want to use tons of Tamiya tape because it's not cheap. And then if you use regular old painter's tape, it's a lot stickier and you have a, ha a chance of ripping paint off of the model. This is a very, uh, very, very low tack. It's even less low tack than... It's even more low tack double negative there it's even more low tack than a post-it note and a post-it note is kind of the go-to for masking large areas but again you pay for it this whole thing was like four dollars for 70 square feet uh, like i mean this is going to last me forever at 70 square feet so for four bucks you can't go wrong and you have tons of coverage so i'll try that out as i'm working on um on these models and hopefully in the future i'll have a bit of an update on how that goes but uh, that is it. Like I said, I have um, I have no new products to show you. Um, bit of a letdown. But uh, what can I say? It's been a bit of a uh, bit of a messed up summer with everything. And like I said, that Twin Auto was the focus of a lot of my efforts to get it finished. So on that note, thank you everybody for watching. Um, I do have some more content coming out. If you have made it this far in the video, thank you. Um, I have some more content coming out, uh, coming up soon. I have another, um, I don't even think I have it on my list here yet. I have another model review coming out. Let's see what I have. I've got, uh, I've done the C45, the P39, um, a 15, C45, P39, yeah, zero. So I've got the zero uh, full model review coming out in the next little while. 
Um, I think that comes out in a week or so. And then on the 15th of November, I'll have part three of my P51 uh, history video. Uh, if you haven't seen parts one and two, uh, please watch it. I put a lot of effort into that uh, initially. Uh, and then, uh, I initially had done it as a uh, PowerPoint and I spent many, many, many hours building up the research to get that done. And then I then turned it into the video and I'd spent many, many hours converting that into a video and putting it all together. So if you guys could please go watch it, uh, that would greatly be appreciated. And uh, again, I mentioned it before, uh, please, if, if you're following these, uh, subscribe, like, leave the comments down below, good, bad, ugly, I don't care, I'll respond to everything. Um, I appreciate any, uh, any uh, uh, comments or criticism you guys can have. I might not follow through on the criticisms, but I do uh, understand where they come from and I will try to answer as many of them as I can. Um, so do not hesitate that. And again, if you know anybody out there you think will like these videos, please share. Uh, if you're on Facebook groups or if you're on online forums or if there's anything like that that you're a part of and you think other people might enjoy what they're seeing here, uh, please share. I, I try to do a wide range of videos on aircraft topics. Uh, so if there's anything you guys like, uh, please uh, please share it with your friends and colleagues. As well, let me know what you want. If there's a particular thing you're liking, if you like the aircraft history series and you want more of those, let me know and I will put the effort in. If you like the model building stuff, let me know and I'll try to put more effort into the model building. If you want to see more... I mean, air shows are a limited factor because I have to travel and money, so I can't really promise anything with those. But I mean, if you want to see... Um, whatever, more model reviews, or if there's another idea out there that I'm not currently f doing and you're like, hey, I want to see videos of XYZ, let me know and I will try my best to put it together. I have a couple of uh, videos in the pipeline, if I haven't mentioned before. I have four scripts uh, already written up here to go do some filming at the Canada Aviation and Space Museum. I'm just waiting for some of these restrictions to lift uh, with COVID so I can actually go and get it done. Um, I might go either way in the new year. Uh, once uh, the new year rolls around, I mean, if I'm by myself filming, I should be safe. I've already talked to them about it and hopefully it's gonna go ahead. So we might see those coming out of the new year. Um, I also have a couple more ideas for some aviation history of, uh, videos, um, some World War II stuff, some uh, po early post-war or CAF topics. So I have some more ideas that are bubbling in my head. And uh, depending on how much free time I have, uh, now that the Twin Otters down, I'll probably have a bit more. I'll probably try to get some of these done. So again, I'm, I'm kind of rambling here, just trying to, you know, what, what's the word I'm thinking of here? Not train of thought, but uh, stream of consciousness uh, conversations happening here. So anyways, on that note, thank you for watching. Please comment below, like, subscribe, let me know what you guys want to see, and I will do my best to do it. Uh, we will see you soon. Thank you. Thank you for watching guys, and as always, if you are interested in any of the content you see, you can access my website at www.shawns-aviation.com. Uh, you can see all the uh, latest pictures of aircraft and museums and the build logs of all of my current models and past models on that site. And if you're interested in any of this content, uh, please click the subscribe button here on uh, YouTube to follow more. Thank you very much, and see you guys next time.